There is a small but passionate number of people in the Linux community that are vehemently against using systemd. And these folks are very vocal when it comes to their arguments against using systemd, and they have some legitimate arguments on their side. They are not always the most rational of people, I will put that out there, but for the most part, they do have some significant arguments against systemd and why you shouldn't use it. So, what I wanted to do today was answer the question, should you use systemd? Now, I have talked about this question before in a video, but at the time, I really had only ever used systemd. At the time, I didn't really put all that much stock into what in this system I was using. It's just not something that I ever paid all that much attention to. You know, I just used my computer like a, nor like a normal person. So, I feel after spending another year using Linux and broadening, broadening my horizons a little bit when it comes to what distros I've been using, I now have more experience with alternative init systems, so I can be at least a little bit more objective when it comes to the question of whether or not you should use systemd. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing that we should talk about is systemd itself. So, well, actually, the first thing we should talk about is whether or not you should care. We'll start off there. Should you care about systemd? And the answer to that question is, for the most part, absolutely not. You should not care what a net system you're using simply because if you're spending a lot of time messing around with your net system, you're probably doing something wrong or your computer is doing something wrong. And if either of those situations are true, obviously there's a problem somewhere. So you don't want to have to be forced to use or mess around with your init system a lot simply because you shouldn't have to. Most normal people, people who spend most of their time in browsers or email clients or word processors or whatever, if you're that type of normal person, if you're a normie, you probably don't interact with systemd or the init system more than once a year if that, and that's just the way it should be. The init system is something that should just sit in the background and do its job and you shouldn't have to worry about it. And if you ever install an application that needs to interact with systemd, which you probably do and don't even know it, the vast majority of them are going to set up all of the services and stuff that they need without you ever having to do anything about it. Now, obviously, there are exceptions to this. Things like certain backup systems and... Plex Media Server, things like that, that require you to have some knowledge of how to start a service. So there are, you know, exceptions to the rule of the fact that you shouldn't have to use your NIST system. But for the vast majority of the time you use your computer, you probably shouldn't have to mess with it at all. And that's the reason why the vast majority of people do not give a rat's ass about the argument between using systemd and not using systemd. And I'm on, I'm in that camp, right? Even though I interact with the init system way more than the normal person does, I'm still the camp that I don't really care which init system that I use. Because the benefits of using something else outside of systemd aren't so significant that I truly care. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So let's go ahead then and move on to the arguments against systemd. The, the biggest one is that it's bloated, right? It, you, it's more than an init system. So it does more things than just what it's supposed to do. It's also a journaling system. It also encompasses a lot of other services that are on your system that are always running. And it does a lot of extra stuff beyond just being an init system, right? So it is bloated. It technically does more than what it's built to do. So that's the biggest argument, that it does too much. And the alternatives to systemd, things like runit, openrc, sysvinit, all of them do one thing and one thing well. They're all init systems and that's all they do. Now, they obviously do the init system thing a little bit differently. They all have their own quirks and things like that. But at the bottom base level, that's what they do. They're an init system. That's all they do. They're not going to spend their time doing all the extra stuff that system D does. So if your argument is that system D is bloated, you have a good argument because I think that it is. I think that it does do a lot of extra stuff. Now, I'm not also I'm not arguing that th that's a bad thing. That's where my argument ends. Like I can understand the argument that it does too many things. I don't understand the argument that it's always a bad thing, right? Suites of software that do more than one thing are perfectly fine if they do those things well. 
right? It's when they start doing more things than they're supposed to do and then kind of slack off on being the thing that they're supposed to be. So let's just say, let's just take two of the main functions of system D. It does the init system and it does it does journaling, right? Those are two of the main things that it does. Obviously it does way more than that, but we'll just focus on those things. Let's just say that it focused really heavily for whatever reason on journaling and the efficiency of its init system started to slack. Then you could argue that it's too bloated and that they should go back to focusing on fundamentals and making their init system better. But that's not really the case with system D from my experience. Everything the system D does, it does well. Now, I'm not a developer, I'm not a kernel developer, I'm not a system D developer, I'm not a developer whatsoever. I don't even play one on TV, right? So I don't know all the technical ins and outs of everything that system D does. There's a good possibility that there are some higher level system D stuff that goes on that it does horribly. I don't know. I couldn't argue that at all. Uh, because I just, I have no evidence to towards that whatsoever. So it's possible that that's the case. But from my experience, SystemD works just fine, despite the fact that it's also technically bloated. So the argument that it is bloated is a good one, but it can only go so far. Now, let's move on to the other side of the coin. Let's just say you choose to not use SystemD, and you've chosen to run a distro that offers you a different init system. There are several to choose from. I've talked about a couple of them already. Run it sysvinit, openrc, there's a couple other ones out there that are a little bit less popular than, the, than those three. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. They all have their pros and cons and, and different technical ways of doing things. So the best thing you can do if you're choosing to expand outside of systemd is to try all three and figure out which one works the best for you because they all have different syntax if you're dealing with services. They all have different ways of starting services and all this stuff, right? So what are the benefits of actually doing this, right? Because outside of claiming the system D is bloated, the people who argue against system D will also tell you that there are benefits to using something that is less bloated. And their biggest argument is that usually the alternative init systems are faster. And they claim that they are significantly faster. The problem here that I have is that I have not experienced that speed improvement that they claim. Now, I will 100% back up the claim that on boot, non-system D distros boot faster. So Void will boot six seconds faster than Fedora will. It's between six and seven. I timed it, but you know I'm not. Uh, I'm sure my fat fingers work slow on the stopwatch. So let's just say it's between six and seven seconds. That is, I mean, when it comes to a 30 second boot time. It's a significant improvement, right? It is, you know, if you're using an SSD, chances are you're going to see between six and ten seconds of an improvement every time you boot your computer, and that is not insignificant, right? The problem is, is that is that's where the performance really ends, right? That's where the performance, in, you know, improvements really end. Once you are actually inside of your computer and doing your stuff, there is, at least from my perspective, no legitimate change in performance on just using your computer. Once it's booted, the benefits of using a non-systemd init system kind of end in terms of at least the performance argument, right? They, it just works, right? It, you just actually use your computer like normal. You probably, again, don't even know you're using something other than systemd, right? You're just going to continue to use your computer. And again, that's the way it should be. But you've made the decision not to use systemd, and that's where the drawbacks kind of start to come in, because there are so many different applications that were programmed, assuming that you use systemd, that will break on non-systemd distros. So things like, and these are just things that I use, so this is the reason why I'm talking about them. Things like certain Rofi scripts, things like time shift, things like... Um, you know, different cron job applications and demons and stuff like that. Things like Plex Media Server, they all have different ways of working inside of a non systemd system. It doesn't mean that they don't work. It just means that you have to go about doing those things in, in a different way, right? And that requires extra effort. Now, there's nothing wrong with putting that effort in if that's what you want to do. 
but it's still something that you should keep in mind if you choose to do this, right? It's You're going to encounter here and there different applications that just won't work in their traditional ways of working because they're expecting systemd in the background. When systemd is not there, they break. So that's something that's probably the biggest reason why you shouldn't use use non systemd distros because there are certain things that you would want to use that just won't work or will have to you'll have to work around in order to get them to work, right? So that's probably the biggest reason not to do the switch from systemd to something else. And there are other benefits to not using systemd, but there are the arguments there are a little bit more fuzzy. Like the only one that you can really argue at least to me that is technical is the performance boost that you're going to get on, on startup, right? The other ones are more wishy-washy, right? The one that you'll hear a lot is that you'll unchain yourself from the corporate leash that Fedora slash Red Hat slash Canonical slash whoever has you on by using SystemD, right? The the folks behind SystemD are technically is technically Red Hat, and it's a big corporation owned by IBM. And if you use it, you are our, our corporate shill. I, I I don't I mean I don't think a lot of people are actually arguing that you're a corporate shill if you use SystemD, but they, they would their argument is that because SystemD is developed by a corporation, significantly supported by many different corporations, you are supporting or being constrained, I should should say, by that corporation and by that corporate interest, right? And this argument I've never really understood. Simply because without corporations and corporate money, Linux would not be anywhere near it is right now. Linux would still have broken audio, broken video, broken basically everything without corporate money. So, like, I understand the argument behind corporations and capitalism and stuff like that when it comes to Linux, but I don't really, I don't care. Like, I, like I, it, it really doesn't bother me all that much simply because I can understand that without the funding that corporations give to Linux, it wouldn't work as well as it does. Case in point is really Valve, right? Valve is a corporation that makes billions of dollars without their money going into Proton. Proton wouldn't exist, or if it did exist, it wouldn't be very good because its whole purpose for being is to support the Steam, the Steam Store, right? And the Steam Store wouldn't work on Linux if Valve didn't want it to. That's a big argument against this whole anti-corporate thing that some people have going on. So that's one argument that doesn't really play with me. And honestly, that's another, it's just, it's one of those things that really shouldn't play in your decision on what distro to make. It really, sh it should not matter. And I don't think that it does matter. So if you're choosing to use something other than systemd, don't let that be the reason why. I would argue, simply because it shouldn't matter to you. So let's just go ahead and talk about the big question then. Now that you've heard kind of both sides of the argument, should you use systemd? And the answer to that question is, use what you want. That sounds like a pansy-ass answer, and it kind of is. Uh, use what you want to use and be happy about it. But uh, if, if you're trying to nail me down on an actual answer to this question, which you should, because I made the video, I should actually answer the question that I, was, I set out to answer... My answer to that question is yes, you should use systemd. And the thing is, is like I've used run it now for an entire month straight on void. And it's okay. It has a learning curve. If you're going to mess around with some programs that don't work on run it that because they're coded to work with systemd, it's going to take you some effort to understand how to actually start services to get those things to run. You know, it just takes some effort and it takes, you know, it's a little bit of a learning curve. It's fine because everything is a learning curve if you don't know what you're doing. I had no issues learning it. There's a lot of great documentation out there on how to use Run It, so I was able to follow through and get it done, but it still was extra effort that I never had to take on SystemD, so that's one thing against it. Another thing that I've noticed using a non-SystemD distro for a little while is that the performance gains that I talked about earlier don't really play much of a role in my everyday life. That extra six seconds I gain when I turn my computer on every morning, I don't notice it, right? Because usually I'm doing, well, you know, I wake up in the morning, I hop over here and turn the computer on, and then, you know, I, you know, I leave the room or something like that. I wait for it to turn on. I don't notice the extra six seconds that I gain. You know what I mean? I just, I don't. And I think that the vast majority of people are in this, that same boat. 
Like, do you really sit around and wait for your computer to boot? Also, a lot of people just let their computer run. Also, a lot of people use laptops that just close the lid, right? And there's a possibility that maybe there are some performance gains on the laptop that I didn't see because I don't use Void on the laptop. So maybe that's one area where I just don't have enough experience yet. But when it comes to the desktop system, I didn't notice that six seconds of gain be just simply because I'm usually not in the room when my computer starts up. So, I mean, maybe if I just sat here, I was waiting for it and waiting for it and that extra six seconds would actually play a role in my day. But it's six seconds, right? It's not like it's cutting the time in half. Like, if it cut the time in half, I'd be like, wow, that's significant. Uh, and six seconds, don't get me wrong, is, is six seconds, but it's also, it's six seconds. You know, it's not, it, it, I, I'd be more impressed if it was more. Maybe it is more for other people. Maybe if you have, like, a mechanical hard drive, you see extra gains. I don't know. I can't test that. But for me personally, that six seconds doesn't really make it a reason that I'd want to go switch to a non-SystemD disk drive full time. Right, that's it's not a big enough reason. So, I think that the reason why you should use System D is mostly because the vast majority of applications that interact with the service system or the init system on your computer are probably coded for System D. And if you were to choose something that's not System D, you'd have to work around that problem. That's the biggest thing and the biggest reason why I think you should use this use System D. So, and really, that's the bottom line is that I think that. Systemd has become a standard, and I know there are people out there who are anti-standard, that they don't like the idea that Linux uses something that is controlled by basically one corporation and is so reliant on that thing that that corporation has undue influence over the entire Linux ecosystem. That is a legitimate concern, I suppose, but I also think that there are benefits for there to be a standard because it allows developers to code for just one thing instead of like seven things. And so I can understand both sides of that argument. I'm not sure that I'm going to ever argue that corporate influence on Linux specifically when it comes to systemd is actually a bad thing. I'm mostly neutral on that argument. I just, I don't care all that much, right? I want my computer to work. If it does work, I'm happy about it. Now, obviously, there are some things that I do care about. Like, like I want my computer to, and my operating system to be open source. I want my Linux to be awesome, like it continues to be. That's a that's a great argument. That's the you know you know why you know why I use Linux. It's because it's awesome. That's the only reason why. Who knew? <laughs> okay, so that is it for this video. It's been a very rambly video. My screens turn off every time I do a video. I don't know how to stop that. I need caffeine or something, whatever that thing is that I need to do. Anyways, uh, that is it for this video. Like I said, it's been a very rambly video. I don't even know if I got my point across in this video. I tried to record it like six times, so I'm remembering things that I recorded in like the first attempt that I wanted to put in the video that I probably didn't get in this time. So if this video is a mess, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if you have comments on system D versus other internet systems, you can leave those in the comment section below. Like I said, there's a very passionate number of people that I'm expecting to hear from, given the fact that I argued against them because, because let's face it, they're very passionate people. They're going to, they're going to come and tell me why they think that you shouldn't use system D. And I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. Let me know. I should, before I hop out, just state this. And I, I, I called this a pansy ass answer earlier, but. The, it is the honest to God truth answer to the question. Use what you want to use. Um, and to be happy for the people who can go out there and use a non-system D distro. Be happy that those things exist. That it's okay because Linux is open source. That you, There's some very talented developers out there that are developing alternatives to system D. Because it's good that those alternatives exist. It is good that we have options. Even if I don't want to use them, even if I don't see the point in them, I'm still happy that Run It, that OpenRC, that SysVenia, that I'm, I'm happy that those old, all those things exist and that people use them and they continue to be developed. And I would, I would fight for those people to have the right to use what they want to use. So, at the end of the day, use what you want to use. It is a pansy ass answer, but it's the truth one. So it's the truth one. It's the truth one. It's the truthful one. I don't know what it is. It's like nine o'clock at night. Who the hell knows what English is? I don't know. Anyways, that's it for this video. 
You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for Libera Pay and YouTube will also be in the video description if you want to support me there. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. You guys put a Seriously, without you, the channel would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So I truly do appreciate it. This is a video for what I'm assuming going to be the last day of the year. I'm recording this a little bit early. So if this is put up on New Year's Eve, I hope everybody had a wonderful 2022. And I hope everybody has a wonderful 2023. So thanks for watching. Thanks everybody for your support. I will see you in the next year. Next year. Next year. Where did this year go? Anyways, I'll see you next time.